Ho, ho, ho. Santa's jolly laugh could be heard all over the workshop. His laughter was so loud and hearty that the great stacks of toys shook. You would think they would surely fall. Santa was laughing because here it was. A whole week before Christmas Eve and his crew of elven helpers were almost finished making all the toys that Santa would deliver to boys and girls around the world. Each of the elves wore a magic hat, which looked just like an elephant's trunk. Each hat had an extra pair of eyes and a long nose. All an elf had to do was think about the job to be done and presto, the elephant trunk would do it. So you can see these special hats made the elves work go three times as fast. When Santa entered the workshop, the roar of his laughter excited the elves. They were so excited, in fact, that they burst into song, doing their work to the rhythm of the music. We're a merry little band. We make everything by hand. We're the gnomes who make the toys for you at Christmas. We're employed by Mr. Claus, and he supplies the saws, and all the tools to make the toys for Christmas. We always work in pairs when filling teddy bears. We work, we sing this happy little song. We're the gnomes who make the toys for little girls and boys. And we hope that they will get to you on Christmas listened as the elves sang, tapping his toe in time to the music. When the song ended, Santa clapped to show his appreciation. Long ago, Santa learned that people do much better if they're given praise for jobs well done. Santa said, Fine work, my little friends. You've done a great job. Just look at all these beautiful dolls and teddy bears and cars and trains and trucks. Phew! It makes me tired just naming some of the toys we've made. Santa took a hanky from inside his fur-trimmed red coat and mopped his forehead. To celebrate the end of our work, let's put up our Christmas tree and have a party. We'll ask Mother Claus to make some cookies and cakes. Dinky can play the piano so we can sing and dance. Now hurry and finish your work, put all the tools away, and then we can start the party. At this promise of a party, the elves went to work faster than ever, polishing here, dabbing paint there, finishing the last of the toys. As they worked, they sang. Busy little elves, oh Santa Claus are we. 
working very hard with a skill to a high degree. Finishing the toys the girls and boys will see. On a special morning all around the Christmas tree. So now we'll sing a little song for Christmas. Dance a little dance for Christmas. Sing a little song and dance a little dance for Christmas. Christmas cheer Though winds may blow and snow may snow Remember It's December Time of year So sing a little song for Christmas Dance a little dance for Christmas Let us try to live in perfect harmony Cause I like you and you that his shoes were little more than the strings that held them on his feet. His toes, turned blue by the cold, protruded through the front of his shoes. In his hand, he held the end of a rope by which he led a strange-looking animal. It looked like one of the reindeer Santa Claus uses to pull his sleigh at Christmas time, but no, it couldn't be a reindeer. Their horns stand upright, and this animal's didn't. They turned down and then swept forward from the tight curl of horn near its big ears. The animal's eyes cast a soft glow of light that reflected off the white snow. The light was so bright that both the man and the animal could see their way in the dark night. If we look closely, we are certain that this, in fact, is a reindeer. But his horns are shaped so differently from an ordinary reindeer's. And his eyes are a stranger shape. They look more like the new moon when it first appears in the sky, and just about as bright, too. The little man trudged on through the snow toward the glow of a lighted window he could see far in the distance, his reindeer companion following closely behind. Come to think of it, the little man was almost as odd-looking as the reindeer he led, he had a round face framed by a fringe of white hair. His ears stuck out like the handles in a cream jug. It wasn't a handsome face. Some might even have thought him ugly, but his firm jaw gave him a strong, determined look. After what seemed an endless time, they reached the house with the light in the window. Tying the reindeer to the gatepost, the little man climbed the steps and gently knocked on the door. In a moment, the door was opened by a lady so big that she nearly blocked out all the light from the open doorway. Yes, what is it? Her voice was cold, businesslike. Please, lady, may I come in and warm myself? And I'm terribly hungry. The words tumbled from his mouth so fast they almost fell over themselves. 
The big lady asked, Who are you and where do you come from? My name is Maximilian Shinovich Uzopolizovilis Germanovsky, but everyone just calls me Maxi. <laughs> hmm. Your name sounds like a big sneeze to me, said the big lady. You can stand in the hall and warm yourself while I get you a piece of bread. Then you can leave. Maxi stepped inside, and for the first time we can see what he really looks like. Why, he looks even more raggedy in the lamplight than he did outside, bundled against the cold. As he felt the warmth of the house, Maxi continued, I come from farther south, and I'm taking my reindeer to see Mr. Santa Claus. We're going to ask him for a job. The big lady closed the door, shutting out the cold draft. Maxie explained, I'm a reindeer trainer, and I hear Mr. Claus has a lot of reindeer, and maybe he needs a trainer. The big lady looked coldly at Maxie. Then she said, Oh, I know that old fool. He'll give you a job. He gives everything away. It's a wonder he has anything left for himself. Just a minute, I'll get you a piece of bread, and then you can be on your way. Please, lady, said Maxie. Would you please give me something to feed Radar? That's my reindeer's name. He's as hungry as I am. Hmm. Grumped the big lady as she turned to enter the kitchen, leaving Maxie to stand in the hall. As Maxie waited in the warm hall, the snow and his clothes began to melt into a big puddle. Oh, the big lady is certain to be very cranky when she sees all this water in the floor, he thought to himself. The big lady returned with a piece of bread for Maxie. Here you are, Mr. Snolos, no, 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 no. My name is Sinovich Uzopolizovilis Germanovsky, interrupted Maxie. S-C-H-I-N-O... Never mind, it doesn't matter what your name is. And look at all the water you've dripped in my floor, she scolded. I dipped your bread in goose grease, and now you can pay me and be off with you. Poor Maxie didn't have a penny to pay the lady, and he said in a trembling voice between bites of the goose grease and bread... I'm sorry, lady. I have no money, but I will pay you for your kindness if I can get a job. The lady opened the door, and as Maxie stepped out into the cold, she said, Be on your way, and don't come begging at my door again. Thank you, lady, and Merry Christmas, said Maxie. The door slammed shut. It felt even colder than before, and as he walked down the steps, the wind blew swirls of snow around his feet. Maxie was greeted by his reindeer. A few shrill whistles and a friendly snort told Maxie that at least Radar was glad to see him. As Maxie untied the lead rope from the gatepost, Radar began to paw the snow. He was impatient to find a warm place out of the cold. Maxie patted Radar's soft nose and gave him half of the bread and goose grease. Here, Radar, that lady was very stingy, and she was grumpy, too. This is all she would give us. Now, most of us know that reindeer don't like goose fat, but Radar was very hungry, so he ate it in one big bite. The little bit of food warmed his tummy, and Radar began to feel happier, and his eyes grew brighter. When Maxie patted his nose, Radar felt so happy that his eyes glowed brilliantly and pinpoints of light danced off the snow and bounced high in the sky. Come, Radar, said Maxie, and together they plodded off in the deepening snow. That same evening, while Maxie and Radar were wading through the snow, 60 kilometers away, Santa and his helpers were having a party. Dinky led on piano while some of the other elves played various instruments. One kept time on drums and one impressive fellow stood on a chair playing a big bass fiddle. Right in the middle of the group, an oriental elf crashed the cymbals and a little black elf played the French horn. You see, elves are all colors, just like ordinary people. Best of all, Santa Claus was singing his favorite song. It's Christmas again. Everything's so quiet and still Snowbirds on my windowsill And there's a frosting on 
my window pane. It's Christmas again. Never seen the sky so light. The snow has never been so white. And the fairy on the Christmas tree keeps winking at me. Paper hats and party jokes and all that folksy sound. Grandma's brought her rhubarb wine. Now that should make the old clock go round. The night is even quieter still. With moonlight on my windowsill, as I look up to the stars so bright. And let my thoughts take off in flight. Could be the one they saw that night at Christmas. That first Christmas. Now it's Christmas again. <laughs> Paper hats and party jokes and all that folksy sound. Grandma's brought her rhubarb wine. Now that should make the old clock go round. The night is even wider still. With moonlight on my window sill. As I look up to a star so bright, and let my thoughts take off in flight. Could be the one they saw that night. At Christmas, that first Christmas, now it's Christmas again. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. While Santa was singing, some of the elves who weren't playing in the orchestra put up a huge Christmas tree. The tree stood so high it almost touched the ceiling. Now that is a very high tree, because Santa and Mrs. Claus live in a very big house. Every Christmas, Santa and Mrs. Claus have a Christmas tree for the elves and their wives and girlfriends. Girl elves work for Santa just as boy elves do, and since girl elves are pretty, they often act as models for the beautiful dolls that Santa delivers on Christmas Eve. Some of the elves were up in the tree decorating with shiny glass globes and tinsel. High up at the top, two elves carefully placed a big star. It was like the star of Bethlehem, only much brighter. The two little elves tugged and twisted, pulled and turned, because they had to get the big star in just the right position at the top of the tree. Santa always insisted that the star face the big south window. Often at night, near Christmas time, if you look towards the North Pole, you can see the big star in Santa's window. Some people say it's just the North Star, but it isn't. When everything was just so and the big star in place, Santa flipped the on switch. Ah, the star's bright light shone softly and kind of tinkly as if a magic wand had touched the top of the tree. The big room sparkled like a fairyland. The elves were silent for a moment. Then the hush was broken as Mrs. Claus began to sing. Christmas star, Christmas star, shining down from the sky. The whole world is watching.
While Santa and Mrs. Claus were entertaining the elves, Maxie and Radar were struggling through the snow toward a small village they could see in the distance. The lights looked warm and friendly, and maybe, just maybe, someone would be kind enough to give them food and a warm place to sleep. Much later, they arrived at the edge of the village. There was a bake shop, closed at this time of night, but the food in the window looked so good that Maxie stopped and sniffed the air. There was a scent of fresh baked bread. Oh, Radar, the bread smells so good. It would be wonderful to eat. After the shops near the end of the block was a house. Maxie tied Radar to the garden gate and walked up the steps. He tapped on the door. A wizened old man who reminded Maxie of Mr. Scrooge in a story he had been told as a little boy opened the door. Maxie was bathed in light, and the rush of warm air from the room felt ever so good. The old man said, If you're a peddler, I don't want any. And if you're a beggar, I don't give any. Maxie opened his mouth to speak just as the door slammed shut in his face. Maxie was shocked at the rude and very unkind act. He turned to go. But then the door opened again for just a moment and a little black kitten was thrown into the snow at his feet. Maxie heard its plaintive mew. He reached down and picked the little thing up. Maxie cuddled the kitten in his arms to give it some warmth, but his clothes were all covered in snow. He took the scarf from around his neck and wrapped the kitten in it, and then placed the soft bundle in his ragged coat. Maxie felt very unhappy. He knew that he looked like a poor beggar, but still he thought people shouldn't be mean just because he looked poor. There are so many mean and stingy people, but then there were a lot of nice people too. He just hadn't found any of them yet. Taking Radar's lead rope in his hand and with the kitten snuggled safely inside his coat, Maxie trudged on. At the outskirts of the village, they found a friendly looking barn. Maxie opened the door and led Radar inside out of the cold. The cows mooed and a horse nickered a friendly welcome. Oh, this is fine, Radar. There is lots of hay for you to eat. You have to keep up your strength if you're going to pull Mr. Santa Claus's sleigh, said Maxie. Radar found a mound of nice, sweet-tasting clover hay to eat. The more he ate, the happier he felt. Now, we all know that when Radar is happy, his eyes light up. Radar was so happy by now that his eyes lit up the entire barn. It was just like daylight inside. Outside, it was very dark. Maxie found a soft pile of hay and laid down to rest. His mind was thinking how hungry he was and how poor. This reminds me of a place in Bethlehem where a poor baby lay in a manger thought Maxie. He dozed off to sleep with the kitten curled in his arms. Santa and Mrs. Claus were having breakfast. They had slept in after the late party the night before. Santa was eating his third bowl of porridge while talking to Mrs. Claus. I'm going to hitch up the team today and give them some practice. They'll have a heavy load to pull on Christmas Eve, and I think they should practice landing on rooftops. I'll never forget that last Christmas Eve. Blitzen nearly fell off a roof. He chuckled as he recalled the incident. Rudolph is so full of spirit he can hardly wait to get out of the barn. 
Dancer still remembers that pile of alfalfa and carrots the kids left for the team in Peoria, Illinois. I never forget all those nice things. My reindeer are the smartest animals in the world. Santa rose from the table saying, uh, Excuse me, please, Mother Claus. He took his red coat from the hall closet and off he went to the barn. The barn doors swung open easily. Santa's magical touch makes light work of seemingly heavy tasks. Inside the barn, he stopped beside his shiny red sleigh, then glanced at the harnesses hanging neatly along the wall. Each harness had its wearer's name on it. There was a harness for Donder, Blitzen, Dancer, Prancer, Dasher, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, and of course, Rudolph. As Santa paused to look at Rudolph's harness, he muttered, what would I do without Rudolph? He has led the team through fog and sleet and snow when you couldn't see anything but his big red nose. Why, without him on some Christmas Eves, we couldn't have gone anywhere. Santa entered the stalls where the reindeer were contentedly munching on carrots and alfalfa hay. He stopped to speak kindly to each one, patting them on the noses. Santa was paying so much attention to the reindeer, he didn't notice Maxie and Radar enter the barn. When Maxie saw the sleigh and Santa's reindeer, his eyes grew as big as strawberry pies. And just about as red, too. The cold wind had made them sore. Maxie walked directly to Santa's side and tugged his sleeve. Please, Mr. Santa Claus, we're looking for a job. Santa was surprised by the shivering voice which seemed to come from the floor. He looked down to see Maxie for the first time. Ho, ho, ho! And what could a little fellow like you do for a big team of reindeer and a man as big as I am? Santa teased. Maxie was very serious in his reply. Mr. Claus, sir, I am a reindeer trainer. That, that is, I understand reindeer better than anyone else. I've brought my reindeer. His name is Radar, and he's a strong and willing worker. Ho, ho, ho! Santa laughed as he turned to his reindeer and said to them, Do you fellows hear that? What do you think? Should we give him a job? The reindeer stomped their feet and whistled and snorted to let Santa know that they thought Maxie should be given a job. That's how reindeer communicate. They whistle and snort. <laughs> Whistle and snort. Reindeer whistle and snort. Reindeer whistle and snort. Whistle and snort for communication. Reindeer whistle and snort. Reindeer whistle and snort. Reindeer whistle and snort. When they are short of information, glow worms glow in the night and fireflies flash in their flight. But reindeer of every sort Whistle and snort Whistle and snort Whistle and snort Whistle and snort Santa Claus as chief reindeer trainer. 
Not so Radar. Sata took one look at Radar, and his voice could be heard all over the barn. Now what would I do with a funny-looking reindeer like that? His horns are bent the wrong way, and he has the strangest eyes I've ever seen. Though I must admit, they are bright and shiny. No, I could never have a reindeer that looks the way he does in my team. Why, everybody would laugh. Poor Radar. His heart sank when he heard that Santa thought he was funny-looking. He felt so unhappy that the light in his eyes nearly went out. The barn darkened, but Santa pretended not to notice. Radar was given a stall of his own and lots to eat. Santa is a kind and understanding man, and he tried to make Radar feel welcome, even if he couldn't be a working reindeer. Maxie's job as chief reindeer trainer was just like all jobs with fancy titles. There are so many other jobs to be done that it's hard to be a chief of anything. That's why Maxie had to help load Santa's sleigh with sandbags. Santa wanted the sleigh to weigh about as much for this test run as it would on Christmas Eve loaded with toys and other presents. Maxie, with the help of the elves, soon had the sleigh full of sandbags. The team was harnessed and hitched. Santa climbed up onto the driver's seat with his long black whip in hand. No, Santa doesn't use the whip on the reindeer. He just snaps it over their heads as a signal that he's ready to go. Crack! Santa snapped the whip over Rudolph's head and the team exploded into action. In the flick of an eyelash, the sleigh left the ground, soaring smoothly up and up. It crossed the Milky Way, and in moments, it had passed over China and the Philippines. Come on aboard the sleigh, we're on our merry way. In the Christmas Santa special, with our bewhiskered host, we'll travel coast to coast. On the Christmas Santa special, beyond the speed of sound, we'll fly this world around, over land and sea and foam. We'll make the usual stops on all the world's rooftops, then soon. Setting. We'll reach every home from Texas to Rome, from London to Manhattan. Then off across the sea. Gay Perry on a tour that's continental. And then it won't be long till we're in old Hong Kong. And all points oriental. Our journey's almost done when we greet the sun to Australia and then see. And then we'll hit the track that makes a circle back across the sea. Hello, Frisco Bay. Hi there, LA. You'll be true to the sea that you're setting. We'll reach every home from Texas to Rome, from London to Manhattan. loaded with sandbags, began its descent as it neared the big lady's house. Santa decided that the team would land on her rooftop. When the sleigh touched down, Rudolph was so pleased at guiding the perfect landing, he turned his head and winked at Santa. Santa, his nose as red as a cherry by now, laughed. Ho, ho, then he cracked ho. his whip again. On Dasher, on Cupid, on Blitzen, on Comet. Away, Rudolph. This time we'll land on Mother Claus's roof. The sleigh zoomed up over the North Star, and in a trice, they were back at Santa's house. 
Just as Rudolph's flashing hoofs touched the roof, he looked back to wink at Santa again. This time, he wasn't even looking to see where he was going. Alas, Rudolph tripped over the chimney pot. He fell horns over tail. There was a terrible crash as the rest of the reindeer team landed on top of Rudolph with Santa and the sleigh on top of the heap. There was such a tangle of reindeer and harness and broken bits of sleigh that for a moment we feared Santa must surely be hurt. But in a twinkling, Santa sat up amid the confusion, pulling on his beard which was trapped in Cupid's harness. For the first time, we saw Santa when he wasn't at all jolly. In fact, he looked worried. Mrs. Claus heard the crash and knew something terrible had happened. When she rushed outside and saw that Santa and the team had crashed on her rooftop, she nearly fainted. But Mrs. Claus regained her composure and climbed up to help Santa untangle his beard. Oh, 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 don't pull so hard, Mama. My whiskers are sensitive. Mrs. Claus continued to pull, saying, Oh, shush, Santa. Don't be such a big baby. You're all right. Santa's beard was soon freed, and he stood up, brushing the snow and chimney dirt from his red suit. Poor Santa. His heart sank when he saw what a terrible mess everything was in. There wasn't anything left of the beautiful sleigh except pieces of kindling wood for Mrs. Claus to use in the fireplace. And the reindeer were all badly hurt. Rudolph had wrenched a shoulder and he had a black eye. Why, even tough old Blitzen had skin knees and Donner's horns were bent out of shape. Santa knew at a glance he would not have a team on Christmas Eve. It didn't take Maxie and Santa very long to untangle the team and get them into Santa's hospital ward in the barn. There, the elf nurses bandaged all the cuts and bruises. Rudolph was hurt more than many of the others, and on top of that, he was so embarrassed for causing the accident that his face was as red as his nose. In fact, even his ears were red. That evening, when everyone sat down to dinner, Santa found it difficult to be jolly. He tried to laugh about the day's events, but he wasn't in the mood. He told the elves that he would not be able to make his Christmas deliveries because the reindeer would be in the hospital for several weeks. And since Santa couldn't disappoint boys and girls all over the world, he would ask the calendar makers to change Christmas to a later date, possibly the middle of July. The team would be fit by then, and he would make his deliveries a few months late. Maxie sat quietly eating his dinner, not saying a word. It was easy to see he was deep in thought. His forehead was all wrinkled. Then his face brightened, and he said to Santa, Please, Mr. Claus, I can go and catch a new team of wild reindeer and train them in time for Christmas, if some of the elves will help me. I have some friends, too, who will come and build you a new sleigh. Needless to say, Santa was very eager to make his deliveries on the regular Christmas Eve and took little persuasion on Maxie's part to get Santa's permission to go on a reindeer roundup. Maxie and twelve of the elves set out that very night, promising they would return the following morning with the new reindeer. And sure enough, early next morning, Santa and Mrs. Claus were awakened by the clatter of horns and the click of sharp hooves. Santa jumped from his bed and opened the shutters. There, in the barnyard, were eight wild reindeer. Santa pulled on his red suit and hurried out to see the new arrivals. He was pleased with what he saw. The reindeer were strong and quite tame, considering they were wild animals. Of course, Santa has a way with animals. Even dogs don't bark at him. Maxie, tired as he was from the roundup, set about the task of training the wild reindeer into a working team. Reindeer are intelligent animals, and Maxie was an expert when it comes to teaching wild reindeer to be tame reindeer. In only a few hours, Maxie had the new team pulling the small practice sleigh. Maxie certainly proved that he knew how to train animals. Whenever the reindeer did what Maxie asked, they were rewarded with a pat on the nose. Aside from gently scolding them for doing something the wrong way, Maxie never, never punished them. That afternoon, Maxie's friends arrived to build Santa a new sleigh. They brought lumber and paint and saws and hammers, and when they set about the job, they planned a bigger and better sleigh than Santa had ever had before. 
Santa began to feel much better. He could see that he would have a good, reliable team and a dandy new sleigh. He told Maxie to send a telegram to all the people announcing that Santa's very near. Chitty bee, chitty bee, bum bum. Chitty bee, chitty bee, bum bum. All is bright, all is white. Santa's driving through the night. Sleigh bells ringing loud and clear. Santa's getting near. Chitty bee, bum bum. Ho, ho, ho. Lots of snow, Santa's really on the go. Angels singing loud and clear, Christmas Eve is here. Chitty bee bum bum. There's no knowing where he's going in this snowy weather. Never mind the weather, it's Christmas time. Pale moonlight, all is right. Reindeer racing through the night Presents flying left and right Santa's very, Santa's very, Santa's very near Christmas Eve. Santa had a great deal of preparing to do for his sleigh trip around the world with his gifts for everyone. His shoes had to be polished and his best red suit needed pressing. And he had to be certain his Christmas list was all in order. Santa always checks very carefully to see that he doesn't miss anyone. But some children have been naughty and Santa always gives them just a little less than he gives those who have been good. Then, too, there are some children so bad and disobedient to their parents that Santa feels very inclined not to give them anything at all. But Santa is so kind-hearted that he seldom takes such drastic action. It was also important that Santa consult with the weatherman to see what kind of weather he would have for the trip. So Santa visited the weather office. As he greeted Mr. Gimble, the weatherman, Santa's merry laugh died to a chuckle when he saw Mr. Gimble's grave look. Santa felt a sinking feeling right in the pit of his big round belly as Mr. Gimble asked, How's Rudolph today, Mr. Claus? Not very well, Mr. Gimble, Santa replied. He's still in bed with a badly wrenched shoulder. Hmm, said Mr. Gimble, shaking his head. I'm afraid that you're going to have very bad weather for Christmas Eve, Mr. Claus. There's a big low-pressure system that is bringing in fog and poor visibility everywhere. You certainly need Rudolph to lead the sleigh with his big red nose. Don't know how you can manage without him. Santa left the weather office in a terribly upset frame of mind. It just seemed that everything was going wrong this Christmas, and affairs had started out so well, too. Now what can I do? He mumbled to himself as he walked slowly to the barn. Maxie met Santa at the barn door. What's the matter, Mr. Claus? Maxie asked. 
The weather is closed in all over the world, Maxie, said Santa. I don't think we can make our trip until the weather clears. Now that Rudolph can't lead the team, his shoulder won't be better for quite a long time, so we just can't go. Maxie thought hard for a few minutes, then turning to Santa, he said, Please, sir, why not use radar for this Christmas trip? He has remarkable radar beams in those horns of his, and you've seen how his eyes light up the sky when he is happy. I know he would be very happy if he could lead the team. With those radar beams of his, why, you'd have no trouble at all avoiding all the Sputniks and stars cluttering up the airways with radar leading. Once again, Santa's spirits rose, and his laughter boomed so heartily from the barn that the spell of Christmas was cast all over the world. Christmas Eve, as predicted by the weatherman, saw fog envelop the world in its damp glove. But Santa was in high spirits, as his sleigh was loaded with toys and presents. Once more, he climbed up onto the driver's seat. Crack! His whip flashed over the horns of his new reindeer team, and in a twinkling, the great sleigh, led by radar, lifted as lightly as goose down and soared off across the heavens on its Christmas trip around the globe. On that special Christmas Eve, Santa gave the world two great scientific gifts, laser light and radar. They were really the gifts of Maxie and radar, but Santa delivered them. On certain nights when the sky is bright, Remember that the glow probably comes from the eyes of Radar, the happy reindeer. If you see the dancing lights of the Aurora Borealis, then you know that Radar is at his happiest. His laser beam eyes make the northern lights dance across the sky. Analysis, Aurora Borealis is the last big picture show. Dancing lights illuminate the dark lands, like giant fountains playing in the parklands. From this source of energies, radar navigates with these through fog and sleet and snow. He sees his way so clearly, it's amazing. His vision 2020, there's no hazing. He's the pride of all the reindeer teams. No wonder that radar Is no more a dream of fallacies wherever he may go. His eyes are always clear and brightly shining. He sent a special magic silver lining. In the last analysis, Aurora Borealis is the secret of success. Without that little reindeer special powers, Santa could be lost in fog for hours. He's the pride of all. 